Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7a practice problem on the topic of thermal and bond energies. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps promote this channel. So this is a problem that we're going to be working on today. Scientists at UC Davis discovered two new substances, aginium and cyclarium. In an experiment, scientists placed one kilogram of aginium initially at 100 C with cyclarium initially at 310 C in an insulated container. Once the two substances come to thermal equilibrium, the scientists discover that 0.5 kilograms of cyclarium has frozen and it is in the mixed solid liquid phase. Constants for the two substances are given. So the first thing that we have to do is depict the process using an energy interaction diagram and explain how we uh, determine the final temperature. And then for B, we have to calculate the total mass of cyclarium and the amount of liquid and solid at the end of the process. Show your work. Okay, so as you can see, I have basically everything, everything written down over here. So I have my two equations. These are the constants for the aginium and cyclarium. Aginium is one kilogram, starts at 100 C. Now, if it starts at 100 C and its melting point is uh, 1500, then that means that aginium is all solid. Uh, is solid and also it's gonna stay a solid because 1500 to reach your melting point when the upper end of the temperature is 310. So ag aginium is gonna stay a solid basically. Now, cyclarium starts at 310, so 310 is above the uh, melting point, but it is, it is below the boiling point, so actually uh, cyclarium is going to start all liquid. Cyclarium is going to start all liquid, and we know that Oh, we know the final temperature. We know the final temperature because at the end, cyclarium, um, 0 0.5 kilograms of cyclarium has frozen and it is in the solid liquid phase. So if it is in the solid liquid phase, that means that cyclarium final temperature is um, solid liquid phase, so 300. So final temperature, is 300 if it's in the solid liquid phase, but also both of them uh, reach thermal equilibrium. So if this is 300 and this is in equilibrium with aginium, aginium also finishes at 300. So that basically answers the second part of the question, which is how we determine the final temperature. Final temperature, first of all, we looked at this part of the problem, which is it ends at solid liquid. Then we looked at this number so that would be its final temperature. And then both of them are in equilibrium, therefore aginium also finishes at 300. So that makes everything easy enough. So now what we have to do is just basically draw the energy interaction diagram. And for that, I do have my notes in what constitutes a complete energy interaction diagram, the, six, the, the five things, I'm sorry, that we have to look up. The first thing is we have to define what's the system and also the time interval. So let's just do that. So my system, and you know, I'm just gonna. So my system is uh, the aginium plus the cyclarium. And then my interval starts um, aginium at 100 C solid and starts cyclarium at 300 and then liquid and the end is both of them thermal equilibrium 
at 300. Uh, the Aginium is still going to be a solid because again we didn't get to the 1500 so now we're even near close to melting. And then this one gained 0 0.5 kilograms liquid. Oh no, frozen, frozen, frozen. Yeah, so this was a liquid, so yeah, yeah, frozen. 0 0.5 kilograms have frozen. Okay, so that would be my interval. So the next thing, so that was, was number one, so we have to figure out open or closed. Well, in this case, the instructions are saying that this was all, all um, thermally insulating. So because this was thermally insulated, there is no heat or work going in or out. So that means that we have to do a solid line. Solid is for closed, dash is for open. So let's just go ahead, put a big circle like this. So close, that means Q is equal to W is equal to zero. No energy going in or out. Next thing, how many energy changes do we have? So in this case, we have three energy changes. One for aginium, because aginium doesn't have bond energy changes. Aginium stayed solid. So aginium, the only change it had was a thermal change due to the change in energy. So I'm gonna do one for aginium. And two for cyclarium. Cyclarium has two because cyclarium had a change in temperature from 310 to 300, but it also had a phase change. So that means that we need to put one for that bond energy as well. So let's just start with aginium. So for the aginium, you always want to do object energy indicator object energy indicator and then indicator initial and final so that's what i have on my notes so that's what i'm doing so aginium goes here aginium changed in e thermal and it went up because the indicator which is temperature went up uh temperature initial for aginium was 100 temperature final for aginium is 300 so as you can see it went up so now uh, let's do the 10 degrees first so for cyclarium e thermal went down because temperature went down the initial uh, temperature for cyclarium was 310 final was 300 so as you can see it went down and now we do the bond energy for cyclarium, uh, which accounts for the uh, change in transition. So we have E bond going down, and that would be because the amount of uh, liquid is going down. Now, usually, well, this is the same as saying that the amount of uh, solid went up. You can just whichever as an indicator, it's the same. Uh, you only need one, it's the same. Uh, the only reason why I'm choosing solid is because I don't have how much liquid you had at the beginning and at the end. I just know that the amount of solid initially was zero kilograms. And then the amount of solid, uh, well, the mass of solid final was 0 0.5 kilograms because this is the number that we have. We don't have the liquid one. So I'm choosing to do solid. Again, it doesn't matter, but this is the info that we have. We don't have an info on the liquid. Um, all right, so now what do we need to finish this? So each bubble should have object, type of energy, indicator, and an arrow. Yep. Below the bubble. Yep. Okay, so now we just need the equation. Uh, one term per diagram bubble and all of the changes have to be equal to um, Q and W. Okay, so in this case, we're, we only have three bubbles. So this is just three 
energy changes. So let's do this bubble. This would be change in E thermal for AI plus this bubble, which is change in E thermal psi plus this bubble, which is change in E bond um, psi. And this is equal to zero because this is a closed system. There is no Q, there is no W. So this is my complete uh, energy interaction diagram. It has the five things that they need to have in order to receive full credit. Um, definition of your system, which includes the interval, your bubbles, open or closed, your equation. Looks good. All right, so now uh, for part B of the problem, calculate the total mass of cyclarium and the amount of liquid and solid at the end of the process. Show your work. Okay, so like I said, the problem never gave us the amount, the mass of cyclarium. It only says that out of that mass that we had initially, 0 0.5 kilograms end up being frozen. But like, I don't know if the total mass was five kilograms, 10 kilograms, 20 kilograms, we don't know, right? So that's what we have to figure out. The good thing is that we have an equation over here. So the only thing that we have to do is basically expand this equation, substitute these values, and we should be good to go. So I'm just gonna write the equation down here because I run out of space. So I'm just gonna start, I'm just gonna copy this over here. So we can look at it again. So change in E, thermal AI plus change in E thermal psi plus change in E bond psi is equal to zero. Now, what am I gonna do? The quiz gave us the equations, so I'm basically only gonna substitute these two equations. So change in E thermal for AI is we're doing with AI, this is the aginium, so this will be mass of the aginium times C of the aginium times delta T of the aginium. Now for this one, this should be mass of psi, and this is what we're looking for. So this one's important, times C of psi times delta T psi. And then this one, this is bond, so we are gonna go with bond. Uh, in this case, we're gonna do negative because we lost it, so, uh, okay, so let's see. So let's just go ahead and make this a negative because we lost this energy. So this is um, change. M psi delta H psi, this has to be equal to zero. This is what we're looking for. And everything else I believe we can just substitute. So let's see, I'm just gonna start substituting. Mass of AI, initially we had one kilogram. C for AI, I'm just looking at numbers here. So one kilogram, uh, C for AI is, um, two kilojoules, everything is in kilojoules, yes. So I can just go ahead and do two, yes I can. So times two times delta T AI. So delta T is from 100 to 300. So that would be 200 positive, it increased 200 plus mass of psi, so this is what we're looking for. I don't know what this number is. Times C of psi is five. Delta T is 310. Initial 300, final is actually negative 10, like this. Minus change in mass psi, so this is 0 0.5 kilograms. It went from zero to 0 0.5, so it's positive, it increased. And then this um, delta H is 100. Everything is in kilojoules, so I don't have to worry about that. And then this is equal to zero. So at this point, 
like basically what we have to do is just combine these two so let's see so if we combine these two that would be 400 minus 0 0.5 times 100 so that would 250 and this is minus 50 mass psi and this equals to zero so if i just solve for mass psi the mass is equal to seven kilograms so this is total however the question was saying calculate okay Calculate total mass and then calculate the amount of liquid and solid at the end of the process. Okay, so this is, let's just be clear that this is total. So now if it's 7, 0 0.5, it's frozen. Okay, so that's what's given to us, uh, mass of psi, solid, 0 0.5 kilograms. This is just instructions. I'm not really doing anything. Then that means that the amount of psi that remain the liquid is um, 6.5 kilograms final answer so once we find the total mass if we know what's the mass of the solid it's very easy to find the mass of the liquid at that point so anyways this is the end of our problem i hope that you guys found it useful i thought it was very good practice and an appropriate level of challenge for somebody who's, you know, practicing for that final exam, maybe midterm. Uh, so I hope that you guys have found this useful. If you have, please make sure to leave a like. If you have a question, just write it in the comments. I'll try to get to it and I'll see you guys in the next video.